Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre no Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today, we have an amazing guest. Her name is Yovi, and I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hello, hello, everyone. I am Jovi D, also known as Chombita Chronicles, the podcast que habla y amplifica the voices of people that we are not seeing, POC, black and brown stories. And I highlight the experience in being one or going through the narrative of those immigrant stories. Uh, may that be your first generation immigrant or naturally born, but you have the experience of being black, a person of color or different culture and ethnicity. So that's what I do with Chumbita Chronicles. Thank you, Marcy. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on my show. Guys, you don't understand all the, the, all the <laughs> stuff we went through to be able to record today. Not only like it was a lot of technical issues and you know, it's not ESC the network if there's not some kind of technical issues. Um, but that being said, we're going to go into the topic today, which is marriage on the spectrum. And the reason why the topic came up is that we've talked about dating on the spectrum before. And of course, we're in the city and there are noises, especially in Washington Heights where I live because they are riding motores still and it's fall. Anyway, so the reason why the topic came up is because we've sp spoken about dating on the spectrum, but we haven't spoken to people that have dated other people on the spectrum and what their experiences have been. And Joey's special because she's actually married to someone who is autistic. So we're going to get her perspective and um, like in all senses of the word. Okay. So yes. before we get into the topic, what is your current relationship status? Okay. My current relationship status is I am um, in... I am with my partner. We've been living together for almost more than a year already going. But we met right in the in the whole hype tensions of the pandemic. I've been single, let me let me for be first and foremost. Due to my career, I used to be a former TV broadcaster in media and television. And I've been single for a long time. <laughs> in a good way, you know, to learn a lot about myself and then I met my partner in the middle of the pandemic when everything shut down and I was like, you know, online dating. And one thing led to the other, you know, I said, I was like, okay, you know, if the person is reliable and shows up, I show up. And mm -hmm. he did. He was like, I'm going to call you at this time. And I was like, okay, he did call me at that time. I'm going to see you at this time and on this day. And I was like, okay, cool. And we took our time because it was in the middle of the shutdown. There was no vaccine ready. It was just like, okay, let's make sure that we're healthy. So we kind of were like FaceTiming for like a, about a month, a month and a half, almost two months before we met in person, you know, being mm -hmm. cautious in 2020. And we did that. And then I know that I, I noticed something different, but only to learn that I would say that People that are in the spectrum, um, I don't want to generalize, but I guess that depending how you were brought up and if you were bullied or talked down or different, I think he was kind of shy and I would say he mm -hmm. kind of have some kind of shame about his disability. Okay. And, and I was kind of like, there's something different. I could not pinpoint what it was, but I know that he was really a good person. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay. And I, I allow myself also to be open-minded, to say, okay, what do I am looking for? Somebody to care about me, somebody to express their feelings and likes. And then we kept on just knowing each other. I learned more about it. And then he came up to me and um, he doesn't define himself by that. It's actually, some people will say, it's an it's a disability. It's not a disability. It's an ability, and it's a it's a power that you have in order to endure. He has been on his mm -hmm. own uh, for many years uh, as a human being, being as a good citizen, 
uh, responsible, holding his work. And, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not going to lie, you know, <laughs> there's no need, but when people like think about it, I'm not going to be concerned. I was concerned, but at the same token, I say there's potential here. There's a superpower mm -hmm. within himself for me. And I really was very upfront. I said, well, we're going to make this work and I'm going to try to learn from you. But uh, the only thing I ask for you is because I see that you have the potential and you're, I don't want to say the word, they say that we don't do it anymore, which is high functional. So just say somebody on the normal spectrum to, mm -hmm. to just kind of elevate and challenge himself to be more present. And he okay. has, he has definitely proved himself to be connected, to be present. Um, we're still working on, on, on timelines and, and, okay. and deadlines because if anything you know about somebody in the spectrum, um, their way of thinking is very much, they want to have a lot of things that are predictable. Very linear. Yeah, very linear and li very yeah. futuristic in a sense. And then I had to kind of like gauge with him and say, okay, hold on a second. We're going to go yeah. and we know what's going to happen next week and maybe the following. But as a neurotypical person that I am, but even though I'm like, I can foresee certain things, but I'm like, I'm not going to go that further ahead. So, and yeah. then also it was very interesting. He's now now for that we've been together for more than a year he can adapt and i'm not disrupting a spontaneity like doing something spontaneous something at the uh -huh. last minute or at the moment he's opening and being flexible with his mind in that sense i love that yes i really love that <laughs> that's great but before you met him what was the dating process like during the pandemic because that I've had a couple of women on the show that um, I, they're in relationships or, you know, actually married or whatever that they experienced dating during the pandemic, myself included. So what was that like before you met him? Oh, my God. It was disastrous. <laughs> Martin, era desastroso. No, no, no. Es que, I, it was like I've been online dating for a while. I met. Ex, my exes, I would say in the period, I guess, online dating has been around for more than 20 years in the industry. And then you're like on and off. Yeah. And then you do your other activities because that's what you have to do. You got to compliment it. You're like, okay, what I'm going to do, what I like. Okay, I, go, I like to go dance or listen to music. So I will do that. Do the activities that I enjoy and then compliment it with online dating. But in the pandemic, some mm -hmm. people were just... Uh, there's no other word in español, descarado. Era uno descarado todo. <laughs> shameless, shameless. Yeah, it's like, I'm like, are you serious? They're like, no, yeah. And, and I was like, I was just not having it. I, first of all, I was already, I guess, jaded because of a, a, a disappointment that I had in one of my days. And I was like, that's it. I am like, if you don't come out straight, you know, do and it's not like oh me it's, no 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 it's que ya. then i was like i'm not putting up or selling with anything either you're going to take me out on a date you're going to call me you're going to show up and that's it i cut off everything else. and yeah and that's one of the best things about people on the spectrum is that they're so consistent they especially are. if they say they're gonna do something they're gonna do it unless something really comes up that is like out of their power they're so consistent with everything and um what i like about them also is that they're very honest like what they say is how it is they're very rarely dishonest right um, right like Mm -hmm. My my partner, he has the sense of being very discreet. I already know that. Very discreet. Mm -hmm. Very, and I'm not going to say, yes, true. They have the tendency to be honest. But he has this, he has developed the sense of, 
when he knows that he cannot say certain things. So very reserved. It's mm -hmm. not lying. It's being being okay. considerate, and I'm like, and you have to respect that. He has his character. Mm -hmm. I know that when I ask him a question and he gives me this kind of face and I'm like, mm, okay, I have to like, <laughs> you know, either change the way that I ask the question and then he will like tell me, you know, briefly. He's very, he has a really good protocol in how he conduct himself in that sense. And I'm like, I admire that for him. He knows his way. I live here in Los Angeles and He knows his way. It doesn't matter even in Los Angeles. He just have this sense really big about mapping and knowing places. He's like, tell me what street are you at right now? And if we were in New York, if we were in Miami, he's like, oh, there's this and this and this and this over here. It's like a little mental... Sorry. I feel like that's spatial memory. That's good spatial he memory. Said, I think that's what it's yeah, called. He said, instead of, let me take that back. It's the, he's a genius in mapping and being his own Google Maps in his mind. Very, very, very. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's really We cool. went to Philadelphia and he studied the whole public transportation system. And Marcy, we never got lost. He knew his way. He knew how to distinguish north south east west and i was like yeah i'm like cool <laughs> that's awesome and then that's a thing too that's that's some that's something that we as women we like yes. also that to feel safe not only like physical wise but like to go out with somebody that knows what they're doing yes. i feel like that's important for us as women um especially when we want to be like um soft and we want to be vulnerable we want to know that the person that we're with they got it like we don't have to worry about keeping us like safe or getting to where we got to go because the person that we're with can take care of it yeah so i feel like that that was appealing for you yes, right yes he was so appealing and i'm like he obviously he happened to look even cute i was like you got this and it was so awesome because like you say for us women we have so many things going on i'm like the last thing i want to do personally it's like i don't have an issue planning but he really takes the lead in that sense of okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna figure out where we are how we're gonna get there and so on and that's very you know, allows you to use your feminine energy and allows him to use his masculine energy and it complements, you know. Um, I love the cycle, that. obviously, of the daily routine, um, it took me a while. I want to say also that um, I, seek, I seek for therapy because it was a different phase of life for me since I've never lived mm -hmm. with someone at all and then this mm -hmm. was different i had to mourn my singlehood marcy it was so weird girl <laughs> especially if you've been if you've been single for a long time this was part of the process so that's part of the See. process like adapting um your self as a as an individual to being now a couple But still trying to make time for your individuality at the same yes, time. Yes, había una nostalgia ahí. And I was like, what is this? And, I said, and it's not that I didn't stop like, talking to my friends, my circle of friends, you know. and you know, But it was just, it was a different transition. So I was like, I, I need to just get an adjustment and just kind of navigate this. This is new to me. And the sense of yeah. priorities, the sense of responsibilities, the sense of time management, how to move around, um, how to make sure that even mm -hmm. though we are a couple, we also individuals first and foremost. And then that he right yes. now, he's actually out with one of his friends and he needs that. And I'm, I usually step out also yeah. with my friends for me. That be a happy hour or a girl's night out. And it's like you you need that balance and space. Yes. Because the, the thing is that people sometimes, um, relationships tend to end up being toxic because people feel like they have to do every single thing with that person. And then the thing is the adjustment process is like, for example, for me, like I remember in Sex and the City, <laughs> um, Carrie, 
she said that one of the weird little rituals that she had when she was single was preparing crackers with peanut butter and jelly and eating it in her underwear in the right. kitchen, right? Which is something that somebody that doesn't live with you and they suddenly, they're living there. Now they find that weird about you, right? Or, or, or the, or so the it's kind of like... Walk in and then she's like silence when she walks into her apartment. <laughs> yeah. Like some people need that, like those five minutes of silence. But definitely I see where the adjustment process is of like getting used to having somebody in your space all the time. And then like, make, you know... I don't know if you guys live in an apartment in or a house, apartment. but like we live in, in an, an apartment. Exactly. So there's, we, yeah, so there's not a lot of space for you to go. Like you could go <laughs> to the kitchen and he could be in the room or something, but okay. Like you're still in each other's space. So, you know, getting used to cohabitating together and then learning each other's love languages, learning each other's habits and getting used to, um, just in general, life in general, now as a couple. All right. Three, two, one, comadres. The technical difficulties are continuing. Um, as always, Mercury in reggaeton is Mercury. So um, I was going to ask you, Joby. So how did you know once you started dating him? How did you know he was the one for you? Besides the consistency and the fact that he, like, took charge in at least the planning aspect, what other things did you notice about him that made you be like, hmm, maybe this guy is the guy that I want to end up living with? Well, I think really was... He gave me peace. That's... That was the key, like... You know, unfortunately, we go through different, unfortunately, in a good way, we go through mistakes and mm -hmm. life experiences and dysfunctionality. I'm going to say it for what it is. And then sometimes we m mislead ourselves thinking, oh, my God, if I feel overwhelmed and he's there 24-7, like white on rice, this must be it. Y te siente todo así, ofuscada. Yeah. And I was like, love is Love, I don't think love is supposed to be that way. The infatuation, the upset. I'm like, no, no, no. This kind of like, you know. And and I was saying, to correct even my own toxic behaviors. And I was like, no, I don't know. No, va. Something is different. I don't. And I need to mention something else to you. I also, as an only child, hashtag, hashtag only child. I talking about having your space. Yeah. That's where we left off. I that was a big adjustment for me having my own space. I don't share. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's it's really yeah because you're gonna f if you know anything about me sometimes it's gonna be really odd that I will be having something eating and then everybody's like yo y entonces tú no tú no invitas tú no tú no compartes tú ni siquiera dices algo. Hey, I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> you literally have to bring it to my attention and like. <laughs> oh my god Something. no yeah because you're not I used to it i'm not used to it and i'm like then at that moment when you bring it up then i'm like okay quieres algo? ¿Quieres Do you, want you know you i'm gonna i'm gonna interrupt you but it, you know what's odd my brothers and i we're not like like that like if we're eating something and and we don't like not that we don't share like if they ask but we rarely ask each other like oh that munchin whatever but when we got with our family from dominican republic tu sire, tu eres come sola. that's all you do you like to eat by yourself you don't like to share and i'm like but it's my food <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know what it is but we're not like we're not like that type of family that's always like cogiendo el de la comida del otro Bruh. my brother primeramente my brother is very um my brother is bien aquilloso, both of them. A ellos no le gusta que le, ni que le beban la, el jugo, nada. No le nada. ponga la boca la, al cubierto, very nada. Very territorial. Yeah, yeah they're very, very territorial. Very. Don't do that. So, they, besides the fact that they're already germaphobes, we just didn't Imagine. grow up like that, like like digging in each other's food and stuff like that. But, yeah, no, I could I can imagine. <laughs> so, with that being said, you know, um, it's, it's, it's just things like, 
And then the funny part is like, it's not that I don't mind sharing. It's just bring it to my attention, you know, and then I'll let you know. And then, but I like sometimes going into somebody i'm like okay especially into my partner i'm like okay can i taste this and i'm just literally like serving myself <laughs> and he's like sure awesome. <laughs> but he uh, has a brother he was he has a brother so i'm like for him he's so the maybe old, it's that. eldest he's the yeah. eldest and he has a younger brother so he's kind of like okay so anyhow um yeah remember that at the beginning when we were like, I'm like in the, in a space, maybe that be, in, I'm in the kitchen. And then I'm like, really, you gotta be in the kitchen too. And then I'm like, I'm in the, and I'm in the bedroom. And then I see him, and then I'm free. I'm like, jo I have to literally talk to myself. I was like, Joey, there's somebody else here with I you know. now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very big adjustment. Even like, it is like even, okay. So my little weird quirks that I like, because I'm single, I like to sometimes walk around just with my like a t-shirt and my underwear in the house. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm not used to having weird men in my house. Not weird, but like a, another person in my house. Sometimes I go to the bathroom and se me olvido cerrar la puerta. Not that I'm doing anything gross. It's just that like having that like, oh, no, tengo que cerrar la puerta. I have to do this. I have to mm -hmm. make sure everything's adjusted just because I live with another person. So yes. I can, I can totally, I totally, I completely get it. Like. <laughs> yes the sense of personal space and sharing space thank god we we noticed that we needed we have a comfortable apartment per se we yeah. have a couple of rooms so this is the office area and then you know and then thank god i love him because he loves sports and i kind of actually i think i had prayed for that i was like i want somebody that enjoys certain kind of hobbies and when i was there so he sits down he loves his baseball dodgers and he chills and you know and i was like cool and then i have to watch my my thing why i'm also like reading or, or browsing on social media and, yeah and um we give ourselves that space and um but the main factor that i think i made the decision to say you know what why not let me try it i think this is gonna work is because he gives me peace I That's don't important. feel because I years ago I came out out I I came out of a very hostile. Some people call it now gaslighting narcissist. Like, yeah, I I'm lost sure. I lost myself. I didn't know who I I I was. I. I, I, it was really hard. I went through really bad anxiety, depression. I I almost lost my job because of that relationship. That's how in, intricate and complicated. Because I also, like, looking back, I allowed that person to do those things. It, I mean, don't you shouldn't blame yourself because the thing is, narcissists, they know how to, and I have a whole episode about this, they know how to pinpoint and make you open up and be vulnerable oh, yeah. to the point that they know what to use against you to keep you down here right yes thank you so enough. don't yeah. don't blame yourself don't blame yourself but like I, yeah i'm I glad do. i'm glad that i'm glad that that your partner now is like giving you peace that's a, that's a, one of the biggest things like I feel like at one point I, I like I kept being in relationships that I needed like that thrill, like to feel like yes. it's anxiety, the that, high, like anxiety, the high, the high, yeah, always the anxiety, and then oh yeah, some it's always something, something. Uh, the shoe's always dropping. The old shoe is always falling down on the floor. Something's always happening, and then the thing is that love is not supposed to be like that. Love is supposed to be calm. You're supposed to. Um, it says, uh, I think this is like a Buddhist saying or something. When you meet your your soulmate, everything is calm. There's no everything like. Everything is calm. There's no like that. There's no that. that. <laughs> Ay, your meal. It's so funny. Because like you become addicted to that. Yeah, you become yeah, addicted no, to that feeling. It, it is. Yeah, and it becomes a toxic train that you're like, if there's no drama or some kind of impediment and a mm -hmm. struggle, I'm like, look at it. Doesn't have to be a struggle, and you don't have to convince somebody to like you or be with you either. And you gotta just kind of like. It's rough, yes. But then, at the same time, like a, a friend told me, you have to love yourself a little bit more. Tienes que quererte un poquito más. 
and then be your own best friend and say, okay, wait a minute, what do I want out of this? You know, yes. and then by the time also you look at the big picture, you say, okay, if something happens to me, can I count on my partner that he gonna continue making sure that the light is on, the bills are paid, the food is mm -hmm. home? And if you don't see those values and characters and morals within that person, then it's like they're not checking the, the boxes. Mm -hmm. So I know that people on the spectrum they love to do like grand gestures, especially when they love you. They do things like very thoughtful, and it doesn't have to be like they spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But was there anything that was like a grand gesture that kind of like like really like I love this guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it comes down to he's very very in touch with with his feelings mm -hmm. um manifesting and saying how he feel mm -hmm. i guess you know no i guess he was brought up in such a way of being in touch with his feelings i was saying i love you i care about you very verbal verbalizing mm -hmm. that is his love language i and the other corner is i was brought up my family would not say i love you it, it was like later later on that my family kind of felt comfortable to say words mm -hmm. about it between being Latina and West Indian, you know, the blend is there. And from a working class perspective, I don't, I don't take it in being, it, you know, you warm up to it. I become mm -hmm. very vocal. I have to feel very, very secure to be vulnerable and and easy for me to say that i care about you that i love mm -hmm. you um my love language is definitely acts of service but you don't not gifts gift is not i think for me you it's really quality for time gifts. like quality time you are there next to me listening to me or just you can be quiet and just be just next to me quality of time is the biggest thing for me mm-hmm because I I have a relationship today with my dad, but uh, however, when I was growing up, I did not. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of issues of abandonment. Me mm crié con mi abuela. I my mom was around, but my mom was one of those moms that had to come to this country and work. And then mm -hmm. my dad was around. They were not together, and then I kind of kind of had a full sense of who my dad was when I was like seven years old. Mm. So then I realized that I was like, oof, I have abandonment. And then, you know, you want to keep people close to you and the transition of maybe having friends or family or going through phases. I will, ho I will be one of those persons that will hold on very hard. And I had to learn how to let go of that. Yeah. That's important. Um, I feel like I, I had a lot of abandonment issues too and, and recognizing that is important because um you know you figure out also your attachment style. Yes. Like if you have an anxious attachment style and things like that. So, you know, I feel like that's very important. Um so what other little quirks or qualities that you that you love about your partner? Um, out of the blue, he always comes out with flowers. He will come out with flowers, that. really. He will like, oh, really? He's like, no, it's been a while. I haven't brought you flowers. And I was like, that would be really nice. Oh, and that's so nice. He, what, what really, really, the love language that I like about him is that we, we like boba. Boba, so he, we have the boba <laughs> drinks. And he's <laughs> he's very he's very generous in that sense. Like, I, what I like about him is he's so thoughtful. And I'm yeah. like, that really is what wins me. And I'm like, okay, cool. That, that's what I talked about. So I, I interviewed a, a woman that's on the spectrum. She actually got diagnosed later on in life. She's mm -hmm. 40. She got diagnosed when she was like about 38 years old. And that's the thing. She said that they're very thoughtful. And, and when they love you, just like anything that they love, like, like let's say he loves baseball like he probably knows like or he likes the yes, maps right yeah. he knows everything he knows like about the legends of the map and he knows all the details right the same thing happens when they love somebody when they love somebody they learn all the things that you like 
right? And then randomly, they'll just do like random things that show you that they care. But it for you is like a grand gesture. For them, it's just them showing you that they love you. Yes. But they're not taking it like it's a grand gesture, you know. So that I, I really, I feel like I was telling, I was telling the the woman that um that's their superpower like they're really attentive to details and a lot of people don't have that especially when they're not fully invested like it's so easy we're, we're living right now in a disposable culture yes. people feel that they can just get rid of whoever if they don't um do the whatever it is you know what i'm saying so for to have somebody like focus on you and actually like pay attention to the details and the things that you enjoy and that you love and to like you know take a, a minute to think like oh jovi le gusta so jovi likes this let me get it for her you know which is very nice um so i have a question for you yes. how has it been like dealing with neurotypical people when you share that your partner is on the spectrum like, what kind of reactions have you gotten? Well, I I think 50-50. I have a friend of mine that actually right now, one of her kids is on the spectrum. And mm -hmm. as a mother, seeing my, I guess, my love story, it gives her hope. Mm -hmm. For the rest, I think because we, we're in 2022 and... and the official like diagnostic of autism was like already in the 80s yeah so these 80 babies are grown now they're in their 40s mm -hmm. and and we have said it many times like we have heard it people love is love love is for anybody that you know it should be unconditional it doesn't matter yeah. what you look like or you know within all all means you know if you're not hurting anybody so I cannot perceive anybody else because some people from like an old school mentality, they're not going to understand. And then you just mm -hmm. leave it at that. I, he presents himself for who he is. And mm -hmm. if he wants to tell people, is that's his choice. That's his story. Mm -hmm. And I respect that. You know? that's how he wants to go about it uh, so this is this is what i've been like advocating on the show is that autism is just like one piece is not their whole identity they are a person right. first and then they have autism right. you know it's not that like i mean and it all depends on how the person identifies too yeah, exactly. it's the same thing as sexuality yeah, right exactly. there's people that say i'm autistic or I have a person, I have, I have autism, Correct. you know, so it, it all depends on the person's comfortability with it. But I love the fact that you respect him for his choices, whether he shares or not. And then, um, you know, the, uh, like whoever has something negative to say, they need to go read a book <laughs> no, because, and they and need like, to it's not my job. And educate themselves. Yeah, and it's not my and it's job. Not the, it's not your job. And I'm not going to be carrying also like a bulletin board, you know, right? I was like, no, you got to get to know who he is and then everything else and it's not i was gonna yeah yeah go ahead sorry no 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 Continue. it's not it's not my 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 as i said at the end of the day it's his story how he identified like the same way i do with my podcast is like and he had learned a lot about afro latinidad and i always tell him too you like you i'm like you have to let the other person identify themselves how, doesn't matter what they yeah. look like they can be dark as night. Please do not. And if they don't feel that do they're not black. tell them that they're Afro Latino. <laughs> you ask them first. <laughs> it's so true it's because everybody goes on their own journey and con eso también, like with Afro Latinidad, like when I was a kid, we didn't. We were always told you're Dominican, you're Dominican, yeah. you're Dominican, you're not black, right? Because like. Well, they would, they would, they would look at the, the, you know, the culture here, African American culture here, right? Yeah. And then look at us and they're like, no, that you're not that, that that's not what you are. And look at your skin and whatever. Yeah. But we're Afro Latinos. Like we have African.
African ancestry. And actually, our culture is a little bit more close to African culture okay, than other people in, in the world. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, you know, when I was a kid and I was in high school, if you would have told me that I was black. I would have been like, you're insulting. What do you mean? <laughs> no, no. I would have been like, what do you mean? Like, what do you really mean about that? Like. Yeah. I was like, I'd be like, I have African ancestry, but I'm also European or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mind you, our culture is like, besides the Spanish, muy poca cosa. Like very little things that are like really, really, you know, European. And and these ears and this nose and th these features, this is not European at all. <laughs> but we digress. But yes, it's good that, and I and I love that. Like, I love the fact that you guys communicate so openly, and I feel like when you guys do have issues, I feel like because of the way that he was socialized by his family, and the way you guys are, you have open communication, correct? Yes, I'm. I'm like it's still a learning process. There's days that I'm not. You are, as a couple, like any other couple, you have good days and mm -hmm. you have all the days. Um, he's very sensitive or sensory to the day, the season. If the day is very cloudy and rainy, oh, uh, that's gonna be a sensory kind of day for him. And okay. And then I have to. Understand. So how do you how do you help him with that? I try to cheer him up, but also I let him also kind of like just t have, yeah, his have his moment, soak in the day, take it for what it is. I always try to like because I'm tampoco no estoy aquí para corregirlo. Digo, that's how he feels and his feelings are valid. So mm -hmm. then I make sure that I center my mind and what I need to do, and then respect how he feels. I always give him a sense of understanding and say, well, yes, I understand that you know that the day may not be looking the greatest, but also remember that you still was able to get up today, get dressed, have have a day, and, you know, feel grateful. And then somewhere I kind of intricate those little deposits in his mind and, you know. But he has... It helps. It him. helps. And sometimes, you, like you say, sometimes you just have to allow the person to be that person how he feels yeah sometimes my son wakes up and he wants to have a sad day and that's just <laughs> his mood for that's the day the mood. or he's grumpy yeah and he wakes up and that's the mood for the day i mean i try to help him as much as i can to center and remember and all these things but uh, there's moments that you know you get to a point that like me myself as as a neurotypical you know, people are going to talk to me. And if I'm in a, a certain mood, no importa lo que me digan, me pueden decir misa. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change whatever's going through. I have to cycle through whatever, you know, feeling cycle that I'm having at that moment yes. that day. Yeah. So what are some non-negotiable terms for, for you, for you and your partner? Like things that are, you guys are not budging on, but you guys are like accommodating each other around. Um, he well we both we definitely what we share the most is music like mm -hmm. we have it's really you know he has a really in, incredible taste eclectic taste for music and surprised me because you know he was brought up here in the united states but he's ample knowledge about music and we share that we we share he's willing to listen to caribbean latin music and he makes points reggaeton you name it he really like yeah, I yeah. Said that. And <laughs> what is it? So you know, we try to. Um, I don't have the only thing I have per se is always like for me. I'm not a neat free, was <laughs> a neat freak, but I like I I definitely try to get with him. You like organization. Organization, but I like like I I told him I say an organized space is an organized mind. And it gives you, and mm -hmm. then you allow the energy to flow. And I'm really, mm -hmm. really like, because it's like, if we have a little puddle here and a little batch of things here, and then everything's a kumula, <laughs> and they, you know, how, yeah. and somebody in this person, they can be very obsessed with collecting things. He collects pins, he collects this, oh. and then I was like, oh, he has a, a library of CDs, and then I'm like, okay let's tone it down a little bit <laughs> like yeah I, I went through that with my son at the beginning he loved 
um, DVDs <laughs> of different cartoons that he loved. Mind you, he could watch all the cartoons on YouTube, pero que él quería esos DVDs. Yes. Entonces, it got to a point that I was like, no more. No se puede más, because he had a collection of over 50 right. already. I'm like, what are we going to do with all these DVDs? We live in one apartment. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I can see that. And then, actually, my mom's friend was married with somebody that was on the spectrum yes undiagnosed but his obsession was like like kind of comic con kind yes. of stuff so he had they eventually moved to a house and he had a whole room <laughs> that was his den full of like collectible items from like different comics and batman y toda la cosa que le gustaba él. but it was like a rule it was confined to the room and whatever went outside the room they made a rule that she would have to throw yes. it away. So he made sure to keep everything in the space that they had allowed for that, which was um very interesting. Yeah, no, and then, you know, also the sense of... Because the thing is that somebody in the first one wants certainty, and that means maybe I want to use the same T-shirt, uh, certain uh, attire made that go to sleep or to wear or because it, it, it also helps them structure their day and how they maximize their time. Mm -hmm. So, and that's cool. However, you're like, okay, this day you're going to change that and I know that you like it, but then we're going to either, you know, it gets washed and everything, but it's like, okay, we got to change it around because you have several other t-shirts or several other shorts, you know, and everyone, you know, and every type of clothes that you may wear serves for a different occasion and that's fine but yeah. it's like okay we're gonna switch it up and then you know you become more flexible and understanding about these things mm -hmm. yeah um i had a i had a student that he only liked to wear a certain <laughs> color all the time so my job in the class i wanted to help him explore different colors so we would play around with color all the time. And then one day he wore a different color. And I was like, ah. right. but then he went back to the same color that he loved. But it's okay. But the thing is, like, little things like that, you, like, as a neurotypical, you don't see it as a, as a, you don't see, like, the importance of that. But for them, it helps them center themselves and kind of, like you said, gives them that structure and that expectation that's already yeah. there. Yeah, because um, what I like about him is because of that structure, then, I, it's not that I didn't used to live in a structure, but then l the lifestyle, he he kind of keeps me like more in a time sense. Like, okay, he's kind of person like, we're going to have breakfast, we're going to have lunch, we're going to have dinner. <laughs> and I was like... It gives you structure and uh, yeah, stability. And I, I really, really enjoy that and maximize my day. But before, it's not that I didn't... I will, I will have breakfast, but then I will have lunch or, you know, the f I will go more with the flow. But then... Yeah, that, that stabilizes a lot of my my way of thinking and proceeding in doing things. Yes, and I like that. Yeah, I know I really do. This 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 is this is good. Okay, and then um the question that I'm sure people ask you all the time: Do you guys plan on having a family eventually? <laughs> well, actually, since we met at a different part of life. Um, we decided we could we obviously you know becoming a parents nowadays thank god to many many advanced sciences you know you can become a parent in many different ways that's a choice and uh but we decided that i think we are not going that route it's just gonna be just us and we like it that way we like to sleep <laughs> Okay. And then we sleep we're sleepy heads. That's the biggest thing. People people I was like I I, I used to be like, you know, que me ponían presión when I was like twenty five. Yes. They're like, Oh, you should have a baby because I of was course. married. You should have a baby, blah blah blah. And pero no te dicen que you're gonna lose <laughs> sleep. Y a mí que me gustaba dormir tanto, muchacha. I had to get used to not sleeping at all. And then let me tell you, my mental health when like um, what is it like in the economy, e e economic, I took economics. I, I was a business major in school. So the, you know, like it does a direct relationship between the amount of sleep and my oh mental my health. God. So if I'm not getting a lot of sleep, my Dude. mental health is in decline yes. as well. So <laughs> I need a certain amount of sleep function. to be able to function. But yes. yeah, if somebody would have told me that would have been like, no, but that's you. the thing. That's <laughs> why they don't tell you about motherhood. You know, but we're, 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 
you know you sacrifice yeah, a, a lot part in adulting that we like he had a pet i used to have my pets thank god i was raised with pets when i was a kid when i was going to school thank thank you for that and if anything i'm a mom plant but i have a cactus so you know how that goes I pour water, you know, but at least I'm taking care of something. But uh, we, our lifestyle is is, a, is as best we like it that way. And um, th yeah, we are. That's pretty much. He's a mom. He's a dad plant, and I'm a mom plant, and that's that's how much we're gonna do that. <laughs> but we we like it like it is. I have got daughters and stuff like that. I she love that. Nina, and he has, you know, so. And I'm sure you have nieces yeah, that yeah, right? So what? Oh, wait, you're an, an only child. child. But I have right? other cousins. But uh, I he has. Cousins. Okay, I have, okay. I have a lot of cousins, a little cousin. I hate. Three men, man, as like me, right? A lot. <laughs> we have like, I have over 50. I, I hang out with a lot of my little, little cousins. So, and then he has also family. Um, But yeah, no, we like our sleep. We we decided for that one. And, and, and also, I want to add that it's like. I take off my hat for parents like you, for any parents. It's like, I, because I, I had one of my goddaughters, but I have a, such an admiration for parents, period. You know, raising another citizen, a human being. I, I have friends that are mom. And the other thing is, um, hold on a second. Okay. Um, yes. So you can, and it's, it's because, you know, I also am my mom's, currently my mom's caregiver and my grandmother's caregiver. And that sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. some people say, okay, it's the full circle of life. It is what it is. I have come to that decision that I'm like, uh, my tab on responsibility, I think is pretty much fulfilled. <laughs> In that sense. It's yes. filled, right? And that's honest. And that's honest and that's okay. And you yes. know your limits, you know? So, um, comadres, we're going to leave the conversation there. It was lovely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joey, for being of on course. my show. Um, and for giving us your perspective and, you know, like, like you said, you're giving hope to other parents of children on the spectrum that, you know, they can be in a loving relationship with somebody that yes. understands them. Yes. Um, yes. and then, yeah, go um, ahead. Sorry. I say that, you know, I, be protective. You definitely do because um, you have to, you know, be able to find that person or have that person as a mom. You have to be a watchful eye of who comes across and um, your feelings. I definitely can honor that. And, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, there is hope. There's, there's, there's love, you know. And then with that, comadres, we're going to end the show. Fa as I always do, follow me at Comadreando Pod on Instagram. And you can follow Jovi at Chombita can you drop your Chronicles. Handle? It's Chombita underscore Chronicles. You can find me also at Jovi D. That is at Y-O-V-Y underscore D. And on Instagram. Okay. Okay, and if you have any questions whatsoever for me or for Jovi, make sure that you send us a comadregram at my email at marcy at comadreandopod.com or slide up into my DMs. Um, don't forget to go on the website to get your comadreando merch. And the website is www.comadreandopod.com. And thank you for spending time with your comadres. Entre comadres.